time now for Money Watch International. Our Ramio Nascentio joins us from London every Friday with the latest economic news overseas. So he is here with us now. Good morning to you. Good day, I should say, for you in <laughs> London. Happy Friday. Always very good to see you, Ramy. Um, let's start with this. President Biden has landed in Japan for this year's G7 summit. Stopping the flow of money to Russia is on his mind, as well as many other world leaders. What are those conversations like right now? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, basically, new sanctions, Nancy, and more sanctions against Russia. This is to, to plug up loopholes from the many various sanctions that have happened over the past year. They're focusing on restricting exports of goods to the country, to Russia, that could help it in its war against Ukraine. But they're also focusing on restricting ex exports of goods from Russia that would bring its money to keep its economy going or that could help it pay for the war. Uh, now, this chart you're seeing on your screen here has a couple of the announcements that we already know from the U.S., the U.K., as well as Australia. The U.S. saying it'll sanction nearly 300 more people, entities, vessels. The U.K. saying it's going to ban imports of Russian diamonds. You can see the number of people that'll sanction as well, 86. That's on top of the 1,500 or so people that have already been sanctioned, Australia saying that it'll sanction Russian nuclear, oil, gold, and steel companies and subsidiaries as well. Now, the UK government now estimates more than 60% of all that Russian money floating out there for the war has been frozen, but that means that there is still a lot out there. $230 billion is the calculation. And that is why the news floating out there now is that President Zelensky of Ukraine is going to make an in person appearance in Hiroshima to those G7 leaders to make sure that money and weapons keep flowing to his country so people just don't forget. Yeah, I'm still forever surprised that there's still something left to sanction uh, with Russia. It's been over a year now with this war. Obviously, they're a, having no problem funding it, and perhaps because there's billions and billions uh, still left out there. Uh, I want to ask you about this, though. President Biden is cutting his trip to Asia short. He's coming back home. He's got some domestic issues to deal with. The debt ceiling negotiations are going right down to the wire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has been warning for a very long time that, of course, if we go over that debt cliff, it's going to be catastrophic, not just for the U.S., but for the world. You know, that it could trigger sort of a world economic downturn. I'm wondering if people outside of the U.S. are concerned about this game of chicken American politics politicians are playing. Yeah, you know, um, the people who know, Henry, know, but the people who don't, they are oblivious. They just go about their lives uh, worried about their own inflation, you know, about um, electricity, food. But the, the government leaders, the economists, stock and currency traders, they are the ones watching. Uh, one economist is warning of a catastrophe. That's a quote. Another says that it would make the 2008 global financial crisis that, of course, we all endured, that we all lived through, look like, as what he said, a tea party. So that doesn't bode well if the U.S. government does this default. And, you know, remember, it took us years to get out from, from the global financial crisis. Um, basically, what happens in the U.S.? U.S. pain means global pain because mm. the U.S. is the world's biggest economy. Um, interest rates would jump in the U.S., but then there would be this domino effect here in the United Kingdom, elsewhere around the world. Mortgages would rise for you guys. They'd rise for us here. Uh, the U.S. dollar would lose strength. Now, that might sound good if you're um, an international viewer, because then you say, oh, well, I get more dollars, I get more mm -hmm. bucks. But that would cause vol volatility, because oil and wheat, they're priced in dollars, and the people just won't know how to price those commodities. And then the fear is that the U.S. could default, then other countries could too. So it's one domino effect, the fall, the fall, the fall around the world. And just to remind everyone, this is happening as most countries are just crawling out of the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? And the yeah. economic sort of burden that the pa pandemic brought. And we know how dangerous uncertainty can be for this market and yeah. many, many others. Yeah. Uh, Remy, turning now to Brexit. Back in the news where you are right now, one of the world's <laughs> biggest car makers now saying it may have to close factories in the UK. So talk to us about what's going on. Yeah, you know, we can't really let this Brexit thing go, right? Mm -hmm. Someone is still going to be upset about this. This time, this warning is coming from uh, Stellantis Group. You might not know what this group is, but it's the fourth biggest car maker in the world. And it's actually famous for a lot of car brands from uh, the Alfa Romeo to uh, the Fiat to Jeeps to Dodges to Chryslers. Mm. In the US, uh, for relevancy, there's about a 10% market share that the company has. 
But this is about electric cars made in the UK that then get exported to the EU. Now, because of Brexit trade rules, they're going to be much more expensive, 10% more for a premium here once they hit the EU market. And that's because those rules say that nearly half of an electric car needs to be made from parts that come from Europe starting next year. Now, that's maybe a good thing to protect themselves. But the problem is that Europe turns out hasn't built out its EV industry enough and it's relying on imports halfway around the world. Guess where? Asia. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, though, doesn't seem to be concerned. He is in Asia now, as we know, and publicly on his way to Hiroshima, he said, listen, guys, I voted for Brexit. I believe in Brexit. But a lot of people are, are scratching their heads. They're a little bit upset about this because at stake are thousands of jobs, by one estimate, 800,000 jobs if you look at the whole industry and, of course, the future of British car making. Yeah, well, hopefully he's doing something to boost, um, you know, every, boost the elements of, of car making that they need <laughs> in the UK or in the EU so they can get the things that they want. Uh, Ramey, thank you very much. Yeah, you bet.